Hi, I'm Stephen Strait, you might know me from The Expanse, and here we are, I'm about to experience zero G for the first time for real. How long has it been since the last group of astronauts came to train for something like this? Um, yeah, the last, the last training on board, not this aircraft, because yeah. we haven't been using it, on the previous aircraft, sure. right here in Nova Spass, uh, was in 2010. We had, we had our Wow, so wow. It's been 14 years wow. since we had an activity like this. Every now and then, an astronaut will need some specific mission training for something, some task they're gonna do Right. on their upcoming mission. Right. Then they come here and train for that. Gotcha. But to have a whole class that's yeah. just graduating, right. the previous astronaut class graduated in yeah, 2010. Wow. So it's been quite a, quite a long time. So it's a really kind of momentous moment, though. Indeed. I mean, we're, we're at the tail end of this new class of astronauts Indeed. that are going to the station. A couple of the astronauts from that previous class are also uh, gonna here with us this week, yeah. helping to train the, the new guys. Yeah. Thomas Pesquet is uh, is piloting for us. Excellent. Um, Alexander Gerst is is here, also former commander of the space station, and Matthias Maurer also. I'll introduce you to some of them later. Awesome, awesome. Um, I think on yesterday's flight, we had 13 astronauts on board, which was more than the number of astronauts on the space station at the same time. Wow. 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 It's uh, wow. <laughs> really an unusual situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this space typically would be full of experiments. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So ESA runs campaigns every uh, twice a year, so like every six months. Right. We put out a call. Anyone in any European member state, any researcher in a university can propose an experiment. Yeah. We select on scientific merit and um, then we invite them to prepare for a campaign. It takes like six months of prep yeah. to make you, mostly in there, we're trying to make it safe. Because right. these experiments might have high voltage. Of course. High temperatures, right. High right. pressures, right. And mechanical moving parts, toxic right. gases, right. all of that kind of stuff. And we've got lots of people on board. Right. We've got to keep everyone safe. So we spend six months iterating those experiments to make sure that they're going to be safe. Right. While the scientists, of course, are making sure that they're going to get the science that they want out of them. But they're all prototypes. Right. Wow. Right. So it's yeah. really a, a lot of development. Amazing. So six months and maybe a year of work. And then they come here to Bordeaux. Yeah. We were here last week already for prep. Right. Inspecting everything, making Making sure everything will survive transport. Yeah. It's what we expected, what Novaspass expected. Novaspass, the owners and operator of the plane that I run the contract with. Of course. Um, and then once everything's checked, we get them on board, yeah. make sure they don't interfere with each other, right. safety checks again, safety, 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 yes. safety. Yes, yes. And then this is flight week. Yeah. And so we fly on the Tuesday morning, the Wednesday morning, and the Thursday morning. Yeah. Each time, 31 parabolas, total of half an hour of zero gravity. But the special thing here is the repetition and the access. Yeah. So scientists, we have other platforms like mm -hmm. the ISS, Saudi rockets, sure. capsules, robotic capsules, where um, they can send their experiments, but they don't get to go with them. Right. Here, right. they've got personal access. Right. So they can make their, their informed scientific decisions on the fly. They can say, oh, we've got that one, let's change the parameters, let's explore a different part of the space. They built the thing, so if it's not working, they can try to fix the thing in real time. Amazing. And because it's multiple days, you know, if they, if they want to switch samples, switch human test subjects or whatever mm -hmm. between the flights, yeah. they, they can do that. Wow. There's no other access like this, so it's fantastic. Yeah, how malleable, I mean, the whole, the whole platform yeah. itself, yeah. I mean. So, so cool. And so then the, cool. the variety of experiments we get is, is huge. I mean, there's, there's human physiology, there's fundamental physics, there's, there's chemistry, there's right. other biology that's not about humans. Sure. And we do technology testing sometimes yeah. because you want to, if you're going to have some like fragile solar panel mechanism on a satellite. Sure. That you don't want to make it big and heavy because it costs too much to launch. Right. So it's, then it doesn't need to be big and heavy because it's going to work in zero G. Right. Sure. But right. then if you test it in Earth gravity, you unfold it and it immediately breaks. Right. right. So, of course. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you bring it to here. Yeah. And we can test. We can test it in the zero G. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, just the, just the diversity of different fields that are being tested here. I mean, it I, it, it matches the kind of amazing diversity of of expertise and minds that we we need to take that next step into space. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it's a little kind of crucible we have here of people from different countries all over Europe, so different cultures, different laboratories, different fields, different disciplines, engineers, scientists. It's really a multi 
interdisciplinary activity yeah and we cram them all together in this little space yeah. it, but it, the, what results is usually wonderful yeah right? it's, a, it's a great community Amazing. this yeah. is the end of the experiment area gotcha and uh let's go and have a look in the cockpit amazing well you weren't kidding it certainly got a vintage look in here with with the dials and, and yeah, switches you, and things. You can see it's proper old school. It's not like Swiss touch screens like a, like a modern aircraft. Right. But that's exactly how we want it. Right. Yeah. There's a couple of additions, just one of the, these black little screens sticking out. They give uh, some indication to the pilots about G levels, about, about the control that they're, they're trying to do. Sure. Um, they typically actually black out the, the side windows so they're not distracted by the moving horizon too much. Oh, well, they're, they're the right stuff, they wouldn't be distracted anyway, but it's sure. good to keep it. Um, the guy doing the throttle sits here because he can reach through and control the throttle without needing to be in either of the main pilot seats. Wow, right. And then, uh, yeah, pilot, co-pilot, doesn't matter because they're both active. Sure. One on the pitch, one on the roll, but just like with any normal aircraft, the, the sticks move together. Right. Right. So how do they do that? Yeah. They're fighting each other. Right. So it's a highly technical solution. Yeah. The guy doing the roll takes a couple of fabric bands, <laughs> hangs them around the thing, and puts his thumbs through them so that he can do this. It doesn't matter what the pitch is doing; he's not fighting. Fascinating. And the guy doing the pitch yeah. has a static, an extra little static yoke yeah. that he clips into the top and ignores the normal yoke, so it's doing the roll and he's not touching it. <laughs> that way we, we are really using all the original controls to do this unusual control mechanism or operation. Of course, yeah. And that, that, that's how they do the parabolas. But can uh, you imagine sitting here and as you go over the top of the parabola, the horizon just, yeah, just, just shoots past that window and then it's just ground, 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 ground. I mean, unbelievable. And as I mentioned, the alarms all go off because the computer doesn't want us to do it. <laughs> but these guys are the right stuff. Yeah. So they are uh, test pilots from the French Air Force. They are uh, some of them are, are commercial airline pilots as right. well. One of them is an astronaut. An astronaut. These right. are the I would I would trust them to fly me anywhere in a washing machine. Right. If they told me it would it could fly. I believe them. Yeah. They're, they're the ones who could fly it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs>